Thank you. Hello, Anton. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very honored to speak here uh, today. Um, unfortunately, you will maybe not see my face because I will share my screen. Um, I would like to talk a little bit with you about uh, principles of sustainable urban design, um, whereby um, we, um, I will not talk so much about sustainable technology, but more about uh, how to foster sustainable behavior um, uh, by urban design, which um, is maybe more important because sustainable technology is quite uh, rapidly developing by itself. Uh, and it is up to the people how to use it in an intelligent way and specifically also in urban design uh, in order uh, to really arrive at a sustainable city. And um, for this, I have uh, prepared some principles, which I will uh, go through with you. Um, and I, I will use one case study, which is the uh, Hafen city in Hamburg, where I already work uh, about 22 years on as a master planner. Uh, and which is uh, more or less um, uh, arriving at its completion. Um, maybe a little bit about my background. Um, many people associate me uh, very strongly with uh, Rem Koolhaas, which is also uh, correct. But uh, maybe my biggest influence was uh, Jane Jacobs, the urban sociologist from New York and Toronto. You see myself and her uh, on the top in 1991. And um, actually, she was the inspiration to formulate uh, the idea of uh, open city. Now, open city in, uh, in a country which is at war is a little bit a con uh, controversial term because uh, originally an open city means that it is uh, a city uh, which is not attacked by conflicting parties so that citizens can go there and be um, uh, not harmed. But um, in our common uh, language of today in urban design, uh, open city um, is a concept which means that you create um, urban structures which um, uh, create uh, multi-directional street patterns and public spaces uh, so that uh, different uh, communities and different types of uh, social groups from different backgrounds can settle in there. You see that in the lower uh, right diagram, which is the opposite of the functional city, which is uh, more or less the uh, city that is emerging under capitalism, which leads to uh, isolated islands uh, of uh, university campuses, residential neighborhoods, or business district that are monofunctional and do not sufficiently communicate uh, with each other. Um, it's very important uh, uh, when one is a, an urban designer that one is not a star architect, I would say. Uh, so um, the picture on the left, the big warship, is not the model for processing uh, urban design as an urban designer, but an urban designer is more like a admiral um, or a captain who um, uh, sails in a convoy of ships uh, that are being uh, tried by communication uh, into uh, one common direction. This is a very um, uh, complex um, uh, process, but this is the way nowadays to process um, uh, urban design. So if you see work um, of our office, you mostly see these kind of pictures. Uh, this picture shows, for instance, an urban block that we are developing with residents and with uh, different architects um, and uh, um, investors, uh, where we set the rules and the uh, development is elaborated um, under uh, the coaching uh, of our uh, office. And we set the rules and um, uh, adjust them according to the development of such a uh, project. This is a collective block uh, of people who would like to build together, uh, but they all have their own buildings. Um, and you see that we let them build in a certain freedom, but at the, uh, at the same time, 
we also ask for a certain urban coherence uh, in the form of uh, using brick, using more or less the same height, uh, and um, uh, having some principles for the uh, ground floor to develop. Um, in such a way, we work, uh, let's say we work in a type of control and laissez-faire, where we set controls as minimum as we can in order to uh, let the residents and the architects um, have a lot of freedom. But of course, they have to have their social responsibility um, and um, their um, relationship in order to coordinate. Um, this is why we uh, always say that the process of, uh, of urban development uh, that we work on can be compared to uh, playing simultaneous chess. Um, if you look at the colored um, um, framework in the middle of the diagram, you can imagine that that is a project and the gray arrows around it um, is society or the city around it. And if you uh, work on such a process, it's very important uh, to work on all uh, work streams at the same time in, instead of simultaneously, instead of uh, in a linear way. Um, this is very important um, because it's, uh, for instance, it's very important to start um, communication immediately when you start a project instead of first cooking a project and then start to communicate because uh, the input of uh, different interest groups is very important for the uh, deepening and qualifying um, of your project, etc. So we always set up a process of simultaneous chess in which as much as possible, the stakeholders are um, already present and can have their influence. This is also a typical uh, image of uh, how we process projects. This is the EBA. Uh, in Heidelberg, one of the former uh, American uh, U.S. Army bases, in which uh, we create a new uh, uh, innovation uh, district um, with a large model, um, exactly because with a large model, it's very uh, easy to communicate with the stakeholders how to proceed and take up um, adjustments and um, feedback. Um, so. The principles of uh, sustainable urban design that I would like to share with you uh, are about uh, 12, 13. Uh, the first one is uh, very logical. Um, brownfield, no greenfield. Um, it is very important uh, today that we try to reduce our uh, footprint. Um, and um, by uh, reducing our footprint, we should uh, try to build on former uh, developed uh, sites instead of in uh, greenfield uh, sites uh, outside of uh, cities. Um, of course, this is not always possible. Um, sometimes it cannot be avoided due to certain circumstances. But in that case, it's very important that um, a municipality uh, or author planning authority creates a compensation uh, mechanism in which uh, the um, um, occupation of greenfield um, surface is being compensated by creating uh, nature uh, or blue green, blue green infrastructure uh, in other areas. So here you see my case study, Hafen City in Hamburg, which started um, in 2000, um, which you see on the left side, and is now uh, finalizing its completion in uh, 2025, 28, I will guess. Uh, and you see on the left side, the empty site. And on the right side, you see very clearly the um, uh, development of the uh, project, which uh, as you can see also shows a lot of um, diversity. The second principle would be um, that we um, uh, create a very self-evident and logical public space and connectivity framework. As you can see here, um, existing harbor basins are integrated in the urban design structure. And um, as you see on the uh, lower right diagram, you see that we have been uh, connecting 
the major lines in the uh, inner city with this uh, half and city in order to create a maximum of uh, logical and self-evidence uh, um, visibility and connectivity between uh, this new quarter um, and the rest um, of the city. Um, in the end, a structure, a connectivity structure and public space structure, a street pattern should be so logical that you can hardly notice it and that you do not notice almost the transition between existing um, and former um, development when the project is being realized. Um, the third um, principle is um, heritage. It's extremely important also in large scale new developments to find as many traces uh, of the past and um, try to see them as positive constraints and try to create a base uh, to integrate them into uh, the um, urban design because it anchors uh, the uh, site into uh, the history of the city and it provides an identity for residents uh, to be there. So for instance, on the top, you see on the left-hand side, the um, Elb Philharmonic building by Herzog and Dummeron, which is built on top of a uh, former warehouse, which was listed. Um, and um, the result is a hybrid building which combines uh, its historical uh, aspect with a new uh, building in a very spectacular way. Also, you see in the front, you see some uh, key walls uh, and pontoons, which we preserved. Um, originally, the harbor authorities wanted to destroy all key walls and replace them by new ones. And we propose that they don't do that because uh, they consist of uh, old brick, structures, wooden piles, um, um, uh, metal uh, boulders for uh, mooring ships, etc., that provide a highly qualitative public space element um, and also identifying uh, factor for such a half city. And also it creates the possibility to leave the boulevards along the water basins uh, low in the flooding area uh, so that you have a stepped relationship uh, between the uh, quarter um, and the water, and the water stays close to the people. Also, we took as many buildings that are existing uh, into the site. You see some nice old brick buildings, uh, which were incorporated and turned into uh, public functions like uh, an information center for half a city or uh, a hotel uh, lounge uh, with restaurant. A uh, third um, principle um, is uh, density. Um, uh, the former speaker already uh, said we should create density, something like seven floors um, in block form. This is actually what we did in uh, Half and City. It's very um, important that we create models uh, of qualified uh, urban structure in which we can stay not too high uh, create uh, a lot of programmatic uh, and typological diversity, uh, keep the ground floors and the mezzanines uh, flexible for uh, different public uses, um, and um, in such a way uh, provide also uh, not only density of uh, build volume, but specifically also uh, a density of, uh, of uh, working and living people uh, that interact and on this basis build communities. Um, a next um, very important um, principle is that um, an urban design should not be uh, too detailed, uh, especially not when you create an urban design that has been that will be developed over a long period, because there will always be. Uh, uh, adjustments and uh, so the, pro the project should be really transformable and open uh, to change uh, changing circumstances. So um, on the left uh, diagram below, 
you see uh, the master plan with blue uh, and yellow blocks. This is the actual master plan. And you see it is merely a street pattern uh, of public spaces. Uh, the blue becomes more intense towards the center, which indicates that the density uh, becomes higher and the mix of uses becomes higher. Um, the um, uh, black lines are uh, the main uh, public uh, functions uh, in the grade levels, and the yellow areas uh, are public buildings on strategic positions like the Elb Philharmonic building that I just showed you. This is also shown in the diagram uh, top left. Um, on the right side, you see below, you see the actual uh, urban design uh, being uh, monitored all the time. So every half year, there is a new map being drawn that shows the changes and the adjustments of the plan and draws in ex the exact new buildings. And you see that it fits into the principle of the uh, master plan, but it also adjusts it um, so, uh, in some places. And it creates also new spaces. And so you can see that the relationship between the master plan as a, as a kind of uh, baseline map for freedom provides the opportunity for freedom of development within its frame uh, in reality. Um, uh, on the top ref, right, you see that we deploy uh, urban design guidelines, rules. So we um, uh, set uh, a certain median height. We set the allowance for higher buildings in strategic points. Uh, we ask for semi-open courtyards so that um, uh, um, uh, semi-private uh, activities uh, can be um, uh, deployed. We provide the proposal to divide the um, Hafen city into different quarters that all have a certain centrality around which um, urban life in these uh, quarters uh, is happening. Um, here you see an overview of these quarters. So you see that we have around 12 quarters uh, in the Hafen city that all have their specific building regulations and that all have a specific programmatic uh, diversity, which, like I said, is also uh, quite um, flexible. So the, the creation of um, a hierarchy in centrality uh, by means of uh, quarters and centers um, in a hierarchy where there is also uh, the, the city center as an important center and the center of half city as an important center, and then there are sub-centers is a very important um, way of uh, addressing um, um, a, a good urban print uh, played for the development of this area. Maybe just a short uh, excursion into the idea of urbanity. Urbanity, uh, in my view, is a situation that attracts a high density of people from different backgrounds, where the diversity of actors leads to productive exchanges and the emergence of new social, cultural, and economic networks from existing ones. Urbanity is scored positively as it is believed to promote cultural diversity, tolerance, social control and synergy, prosperity and innovation. Urbanity can also promote sustainability. In the past, urbanity was primarily associated with physical structures and presence such as centrality, Today, under the influence of digitalization and mobility, it appears dense and spread over greater distances. Urbanity cannot be designed. You can create structural and programmatic conditions that promote the emergence of urbanity. This is very important. And urbanity does not show an area-wide intensity, but rather develops in concentrations with a certain impact on their surroundings. The next principle, which I already mentioned, is programmatic and typological diversity. Um, um, in a modern uh, city, um, work and living and amenities are close to each other. Schools, uh, crashes, um, uh, shopping, uh, workplaces, um, cultural activities, they are uh, together. Uh, they do not hinder each other. They are carefully 
uh, integrated in the urban design, um, also respecting different uh, legislation of hindering of noise, etc. But in the end, today, uh, one should uh, create a city that is at least 50% residential and 50% um, other uh, functions in order to be lively and in order to deepen uh, and create um, uh, a real community effect. Um, very important um, is the uh, um, uh, aspect of affordable housing. And we also introduced in the Hafen City building cooperatives, uh, collectives that build uh, a building of their own. Um, we have in Hafen City about um, 45% uh, residential functions. Um, if you uh, also count the hotel functions, uh, around 50%. Um, and of this 50%, uh, 30% uh, should be uh, affordable housing so that so that income groups with lesser incomes uh, can also be part of uh, such a neighborhood. This increases the um, friction between social groups and enhances therefore the quality of urbanity. Um, and um, uh, this special typology of building cooperatives works very well because these people, for instance, we have a music building uh, where musicians live and they have built in uh, re rehearsal studios and a concert hall. There is a religious group that has a chapel in their building. Uh, they have uh, collective uh, guest uh, rooms in their building. And we have a design uh, collective, for instance, uh, which contains uh, graphical designers, architects, uh, etc., who have their office and their, and their living space combined um, in their building. These building collectives have a spe specific uh, engagement with their surroundings and are very uh, important catalysts uh, to qualify um, a neighborhood. Then uh, we, of course, uh, um, are aware that we should keep certain, uh, maybe also well developable um, uh, sites like old sheds in remote areas um, free for creative industries. Um, let's say the um, um, allowance of opportunities uh, for uh, um, startups and for um, uh, low budget but high cultural active groups is very important. So also in half the city, there's a considerable amount uh, in one section uh, of old warehouses that has been left like it is and that is being, is being curated by a special group of people uh, in order to foster um, uh, creative activity and innovation. Of course, mobility is one of the most um, important factors today of um, uh, urban uh, development. Actually, um, uh, the arrival of the car after the Second World War uh, can be also uh, uh, called the biggest disaster for urban development because only due to the arrival of the car, cities uh, started to spread out uh, and um, uh, tend to become uh, like American cities um, all the time unless uh, municipalities create very strong master plans and create very strong coaching uh, and foster um, uh, public transport. So in Hafen City, there is a, there's a very conscious uh, dealing with public transport. First of all, um, a very expensive investment was done, namely uh, a new metro line that you see in the top right corner. Um, it was not financed by the project itself, but by the city of Hamburg as a whole. It was considered as absolutely necessary, and this uh, appeared to be a very good decision to create this metro line, which um, also eventually will go across uh, the river to southern neighborhoods that are not developed yet. Like you can see in the railway station uh, top left, where uh, the rail stops for the time being, but uh, we have been planning it in such a way that it can continue to the other side of the river um, in the future. Uh, specific activity uh, is being addressed to uh, biking. 
um, whereby uh, biking uh, is also uh, an increasing problem also in our cities, uh, Amsterdam and Rotterdam, for instance, where I come from, uh, where um, the e-biking and the fact that we have a zoo of uh, vehicles of different sizes uh, running uh, like madmen through the sta- through the streets um, creates a dangerous situation, and um, we are now in the process um, of conceiving um, not only separate bike lanes but um, double separate bike lanes, in which there is one slow bike lane uh, and one fast bike lane next to uh, free bus lanes um, and uh, and car lanes in the cities, which costs a lot of space, but um, it is necessary. And it indicates that um, you have to design your street patterns always um, in a very uh, flexible way. Hafen City also has its own car sharing um, uh, system. And it has uh, managed over 20 years to reduce the parking norm from the normal uh, Hamburg parking parking norm to 50% of the Hamburg parking norm. Um, massaging the investors to accept this. Um, Maybe a a very important aspect is the way that um, uh, plots are given to developers. Um, In the Hafen City, this is quite special because the land is owned by the city. Uh, And um, the uh, plots are being developed as competitions for investors and architects um, with a precast program. And the winner of the competition does not immediately, uh, cannot immediately buy the land, but the winner of the competition has to first provide um, uh, his uh, elaborated design and submit the building permit for which he has to pay a lot of money of uh, legal fees. So that um, on the moment that this happens, uh, the city is uh, sure that the building also will be built like that. Uh, And on that moment that this guarantee is there, uh, the plot is sold. In Hafen City, most of the plots are sold uh, because the revenue of the uh, income from the selling of the plots pays for the street uh, pattern, the public spaces, the keys, uh, and other uh, qualifying programs. Then, of course, we have an elaborated green and water management um, uh, project. Uh, We have a a half and city environmental label, uh, which uh, nowadays asks for zero uh, emission buildings. So this, for instance, is a building that, uh, that we are building ourselves after 20 years of only doing the urban design. Uh, and um, in these diagrams on the right side, you see that we monitor consti- continuously during the elabor- elaboration of the building, uh, the um, uh, material flows and the eventual um, emission components um, of the different components of the building so that uh, we uh, arrive um, at the required um, uh, Hafen City label, environmental label, on the moment that we put in the building request. So these were the, a few principles. Of course, they are not uh, concluding uh, for sustainable design. And I have one more uh, message to you, that is that we have since about um, Half a year we founded at ATH in Zurich, the Swiss-Ukraine uh, uh, network, which is a network of uh, architects, engineers, uh, planners, uh, some politicians. Uh, we are about uh, 50 people, of which uh, 40%, I think, are the Ukrainian uh, women architects who are uh, temporarily in, uh, in Switzerland. Um, and um, we have uh, developed uh, seven clusters of projects. Uh, one project is EBA Ukraine. Uh, a second project is uh, uh, support for master planning for cities. We are uh, discussing with several cities to support them uh, with master planning. Um, the third thing is uh, housing. We, for instance, uh, one of our members uh, he builds tiny houses uh, for free um, and gives them to uh, municipalities um, by crowdfunding. 
we have a group that uh, sends uh, material and especially glass to the Ukraine for repairing uh, broken windows. Uh, we have a capacity building and education section that helps uh, civil servants to be ed educated. Um, we have a mapping Ukraine that uh, works with um, very advanced uh, combinations of spatial data and satellite images uh, to map um, uh, potential uh, developments or also damage uh, assess damages. And we have a uh, small Ukrainian community and cultural platform in uh, in Switzerland. Um, this uh, um, IBA that will be presented tomorrow by uh, Petr Navrat and um, uh, Benjamin Hosbach uh, in your uh, symposium is uh, is not the idea to be a, uh, a, a building exhibition in one city, but the idea is to create a set of criteria and values across the Ukraine uh, and uh, create this into an organization, into a coordination platform for building culture that can um, uh, initiate, but also adopt uh, running projects. So that means that, for instance, uh, uh, exemplary running project, for instance, the, the project Kohati of the uh, Metalab group in uh, uh, Ivano Frantesk um, as a grassroots activity could be integrated uh, into uh, such an uh, EBAC um, uh, label so that um, it is at the same time um, a kind of overarching um, uh, quest for uh, a good building culture in Ukraine, but at the same time uh, also immediately alive uh, by grassroots activities. And of course, the main uh, uh, steering people of such an um, organization should be, of course, Ukrainian architects. So this was my talk. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Uh, incredible opportunity to have a look at an incredible uh, complexity of your admiral work, uh, transforming huge urban territories. And also, thank you very much for supporting Ukraine with all that you are doing and proposing. Uh, I wanted to describe the auditoria we are in, in a renovated, revitalized post-industrial building, big hall, we are 700 people sitting here and uh, participating at your lecture. Maybe if we have a possibility for a few fast questions to you, we'll be very glad. Appreciate it. Yes, okay. of course. Yes. Ah, there is a mic. Uh, thank you for this great lecture, first of all. And and uh, my question is, uh, when uh, we with our team working with the Green Space Development Strategy, we faced various challenges. And the main challenge in Ukraine is the current legislation to uh, support the development of green areas in urban structure and to protect them. And as you told in your lecture about the typology, may, maybe you can talk about more about it, how about um, the legislation, urban planning uh, in, um, requirements in this field, uh, which you can propose to Ukraine to protect and to develop green areas and uh, city green structure better. Thank you. Yes. Well, the, let's say the legislation in every country uh, and the type of government in every country in, um, is different. And therefore also in, uh, in cities and also in uh, uh, rural areas or natural um, areas. Um, um, let's say um, it is um, uh, wrong to start um, saying, okay, we have a problem with legislation, so we should first uh, change legislation and then we can do uh, our work. This is exactly uh, what I meant with the process, uh, the approach of simultaneous chess, uh, which means that um, if you are in a country where there's a bad legislation uh, in terms of environmental protection uh, and the bad legislation in terms of urban development, 
like the United States of America, for instance. Um, you should, of course, not try uh, to be Don Quixote and start to first uh, try to, um, to modify legislation. You should do this at the same time uh, while you are uh, trying to proceed with action uh, and projects, both on a larger as well as on a smaller scale um, in the urban uh, realm. Because only by um, uh, a kind of multi multiple um, uh, parallel activity um, of people, uh, you can uh, foster change. So um, it means that uh, this is also the intention of our, uh, our IBA uh, ID, that um, uh, on the level of uh, the overarching uh, situation of the country, you work on, uh, on bow cult culture, you work on, uh, on uh, planning values, uh, you work on the uh, transforming of uh, an ad adjustment of uh, legislation, you uh, work on the uh, um, introduction of uh, um, democratic uh, participation processes. Um, at the same time, you try to already um, build in these principles, despite uh, lack of legislation, in grassroots projects that you are starting, uh, in which, of course, uh, the whole um, uh, sustainable uh, objective um, of Blue and Green Network should be built in from the beginning. Um, the, um, the, the, the remarkable uh, and unique position of an urban designer is that he is not um, a fatalist uh, and he is not uh, an overambitious um, uh, um, design um, uh, man or woman, but he is uh, somebody who strategically tries to combine uh, forces and interest to, the, to drive them in the right direction. And in such a way, you can uh, um, gradually change society by urban design. Thank you. Maybe one more question. Uh, I see here a hand. In your country, you utilize a different approach. So basically, the state decide, decides what is going to be constructed and how it's going to fit the urban environment. In our country, development companies just build and they leave behind just houses and these houses or buildings are not really integrated into the surrounding what is your advice in this regard what can we do to discard this approach and what are some of the approaches that we can utilize to make living for residents more comfortable in your country there is a more uh, perfect legislation and low and uh, all the buildings are integrated into urban fabric and it works well in a, in a complex but in Ukraine in many cases we have separated and single standing buildings not integrated into into uh, general urban uh, environment so that there is no uh, quality of uh, public spaces and so on so what are your proposal how to break this well, we have uh, work, been working in the past in uh, in China, for instance, and um, there the legislation is also uh, sometimes uh, disastrous. Um, we just make an inventory of uh, the possibilities and we try to convince um, um, uh, community um, uh, leaders and um, uh, investors uh, to uh, accept uh, our proposals. Um, uh, and we try on a smaller scale uh, to arrive at better urban conditions. And if this can only be done with um, single buildings, with um, large scale nondescript public spaces, um, we would uh, um, uh, immediately, um, what, what very much helps, of course, uh, very often is that you do a proposition in which both the investor and the city uh, earns more money than with his own proposal. Um, while you create a better um, environment. 
Um, so it, it illustrates that that we 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 are not let let's say um, green moralists that hate capitalists or something like that. We are more trying to use also the um, forces um, of uh, of the market economy uh, to uh, create um, uh, uh, projects that are uh, providing uh, better um, um, revenues. Uh, than the projects that uh, the people are proposing, for instance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Keys, for participating in our forum. Thank you very much very for, your, for your time and uh, for your incredible lecture. And uh, best applause from, from, from Lviv. Thank you very much. What a pleasure. And have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.